Hello guys and welcome back to another requested tutorial video and yes this is going to be the uh, second view in this sort of mini series that we're doing here where we're going to be taking a look at a few requested tutorials by all of you guys um, and today we're going to be taking a look at Windows 7 build 6801 now this was actually requested a, a while ago by uh, actually more than one person um, and I haven't actually been able to find that much information about this build. And that's probably going to make it a little bit more interesting once we actually start taking a look at it. Um, but the only thing I've been able to find is that this is a pre-release Milestone 3 build. And it was released at Microsoft's Developer Conference in 2008. And that's literally all I've been able to find uh, after looking around uh, for some information about this build. So I basically know not a lot about it. And... Yeah, so that's probably going to make it a lot more interesting, um, as I said, once we start getting into the uh, installation and all of that. So just like always, I'm going to have all the links you're going to need down below. And this build also comes in both a 32 and a 64-bit version. So, you know, depending on which version that you want to get, both of those links will, will, will be down below. And that is literally all you have to get, uh, since this is based off of... Uh, Windows or since this is a beta build of Windows 7 we're not going to need uh, any boot disk or anything like that like we needed in the last video for Windows 95 and uh, yeah so let's just get started so I'm going to be using VMware Workstation 10 just like I always do you can of course use whatever virtual machine software that you want to use so, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a new virtual machine and if you're using VMware Workstation, you're going to want to select the top option, which is the typical or the recommended option, and then click on Next. And then you want to, just like we always do, select I will install the operating system later, and this just basically makes the virtual machine with a blank hard disk. So then just click Next. And for the guest operating system, obviously, you're just going to want to set it to Microsoft Windows. And the version is either Windows 7 or Windows 7 X64, depending on which version that you downloaded. Now, again, uh, both those links will be down below. Uh, I downloaded the 32-bit version because it is a little bit smaller in size. So I'm just going to choose Windows 7. But obviously, if you chose the 64-bit version, you would just choose the X64 option from there. And then once you have that selected, just click on next and you can give it a name. I already have another machine named Windows 7, so I'm just going to call this Windows 7 6801. And I mean, you can, of course, name it whatever you want. Uh, and then just click on next once you have it named. And I usually like to store the virtual disk as a single file as it makes it easier to you know, kind of move uh, the disk file around if you ever wanted to do that. And for the maximum hard drive size, um, again, VMware usually gives it a little bit more than it usually needs. I believe Windows 7 only needs like 15 gigabytes minimum to install. And especially since this is a beta build, I'm not going to be giving it that much space. If you wanted to, you could definitely give it 60 gigabytes. I'm going to probably uh, drop it down to about 30 and just, you know, cut that in half. Um, so yeah, uh, now we have that selected, so we're just going to click on next. And now we're going to click on the customize hardware option. And one thing that I would recommend you do is if your computer is capable of it, give it, you know, at least two gigs of RAM. So go up here where it says 1024 and type in 2048. Now you don't have to do this as Windows 7 can work just fine with one gig of RAM, but it's usually a little bit, you know, it'll make it a little bit faster if you uh, give it two gigs of RAM. And uh, also, very similarly, go down to the Processors tab. Again, only if your host PC, the one that you're making the actual virtual machine on, can support this. Uh, I would recommend changing the number of processors up to two, as I just think you know newer operating systems like Windows 7 and 8 would work better with two gigs of RAM and a two-core processor. Um, but again, it would probably work fine with just one gig and, and, and a single-core processor. But of course you know you can change that if you want to and then you want to go down to the cd slash dvd drive and just like always you're going to want to click on use iso image file and in here you're going to want to browse to that iso file that you downloaded all right and once you have that selected just click on the close button and then the finish button 
it's going to pop up with a new virtual machine with whatever that you named it. Um, obviously, I call mine Windows 7 6801. All right, so now what you're going to want to do is if you're using a VMware product, uh, you're going to want to go up to the top menu where it says VM up here at the top. And you're going to want to go into where it says power and then power on to BIOS. Now, um, as I've mentioned, you know, multiple times when we do Windows beta builds, um, this is going to take you into the BIOS. And we have to do this because we have to set the uh, BIOS date back to before that the time bomb was activated on this beta build. Now, if you're using something other than VMware Workstation, you're going to have to find another method of booting into the BIOS. Now, I did do a tutorial on doing this in uh, Microsoft Virtual PC. So if you're interested in that, you can click here on the screen right now and it will take you to that video. Um, if you're using Oracle VM VirtualBox, I believe you can't boot into the BIOS and you're going to have to find a certain method of uh, setting the clock back without bringing it into the BIOS. I'm not really sure how that's done. Um, you can, of course, look that up if you need to. Um, but anyway, all we have to do here is uh, use the arrow keys to go down where it says System Date and change this to 9-14-2008. And then press enter to you know make it write all that and then just press f10 on your keyboard and then press enter to confirm all those changes and now it's going to be able to load um the iso correctly because if you didn't do that and the date was still set to a date in 2015 it's not going to work properly because uh the time bomb would have passed and it's not going to let you install the uh, the beta so that's how we get around that but uh here you, you can see here it is booting it is using the windows vista boot screen i believe that does change later in the video uh or later in the uh, installation to a very interesting looking um boot screen that isn't anything like the windows 7 boot screen but of course we'll get to that uh once we you know get to that portion of the setup so but but here we are um, if you guys remember, I did a, a Windows 7 beta build 7000, and uh, the install process so far looks pretty much identical to that, except it has a, a different copyright date down here at the bottom. And yeah, this was about a year before that build, so there's going to be a few things that are a little bit different. But obviously, you just want to select uh, your language, your time and currency format, and your uh, keyboard layout, and just click on Next. And then just click on install now and it's going to say please wait and it's going to hopefully bring us up to the screen where we can choose you know where we want to install it on which should be our uh, 30 gig hard drive okay so first we have to agree to the microsoft pre-release software license terms so you just want to ch uh, check the i accept the license terms box down here and then just click on next and here is where you want to select custom advanced and then choose your hard drive in here. As you see, mine is 30 gigabytes like I made it during setup. So you wanna make sure that it's the same size uh, or very similar to that size as it might not be the exact same. And then you just want to have that selected and then click next. And that's basically all we have to do right now. It's going to take us through the rest of the setup. It's going to copy all the files. It does all this automatically. And yeah, so this, this takes a pretty good amount of time especially if you're doing this on like a real computer um, the times are a little bit faster here in a virtual machine but I'm just gonna pause the video and I'm just gonna come back once this portion has completed alright so that portion of the setup is now finished and we are here where it says Windows needs to restart to continue and it has just timed out so now it is going to be doing that here and we should yeah here is yeah here is a uh, that new looking boot screen that I was talking about it you know let me just uh, get the mouse cursor out of the way it kind of looks very interesting uh, sort of like a mix between uh, the final Windows 7 and uh, sort of the Windows Vista one as you know it still says starting Windows but th there's like a bar going across this time and yeah obviously this was changed in I believe uh, the beta build build 7000 uh, they you know ch uh, uh, changed this and, but yeah, now it's just going through uh, all of its first boot procedures here. And yeah, it shouldn't take that long. And um, 
yeah I may have to uh, uh, pause the video again actually maybe I don't but yeah here we are it says set up his starting services and yeah now it's just completing installation so I think it actually does have to restart one more time because that was a pretty fast first boot I was thinking for a second and you know it can't be done after after being that fast but so yeah um, I think it just has to do a few more things here then one more restart then we go through um, sort of the user profile setup where it's gonna like ask us through or ask us for our name and all that kind of stuff and then we should get into the desktop so um, I think I'm gonna have to pause the video again and I'm gonna come back once we are at that screen alright so here we are at the screen where we have to type in our name and our computer name so I'm just gonna do that here and I'm gonna give it a name of let's do 6801 free beta and well, let's do that so then uh, once you have all that entered just, uh, just click on next and you can you know type in a password for your account if you want to this is probably gonna be, like this whole setup process is probably gonna be very similar to the normal Windows 7 setup um, and you also don't have to enter uh, any product key so when you get to this screen um, I guess uncheck this box and then just click on next and then you can just like sort of bypass that screen and then just uh, click on use recommended settings and put in your time zone and I'm just going to choose home network and it's going to connect to all of that and apply settings and we should get to the desktop okay so if it asks you for anything about creating uh, a home group unless you want to or like if you want uh, this um, VM to join you like your already um, existing home group um, I would just click on this skip button down here but you know that's just my preference if you wanted to add this to your home group or something then you would go through that whole uh, setup but I mean this is like a beta build anyway and I don't really think that feature was like 100% um, working yet so yeah here we are at the welcome screen which like I said looks pretty much exactly the same as the build 7000 welcome screen um, and I think that the desktop is also going to look that way at least you know at first glance sort of um, and, this, and this is also based uh, on the ultimate uh, edition of Windows 7 which I guess they made all of their betas that way so they could test all the features or whatever but yeah now it is uh, preparing our desktop and we should be in there yeah here we are Oh no, actually, I, I was completely off. This looks just like the Windows Vista desktop, um, actually. So they still hadn't uh, got uh, the whole uh, Windows 7 interface completely finished yet, as we still have the sort of Windows Vista taskbar, which it kind of is starting to look a little bit different, but it still looks you know, very similar to the Windows Vista one. And we have the same exact Windows Vista background. And uh, the start menu looks kind of the same. I think these buttons look a little different, though. You can go in here. And, you know, yeah, I think those those buttons will look a little different. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually um, change the guest resolution. I think I can actually just do that from here. Yeah, go into uh, display settings. I don't have to go through all those menus. Um, and we'll change this up to. You have a lot of options in here. We'll do 1920 by 1080 right there. So we'll just apply and we will make this full screen. So there we go. So yeah, here we are in full 1080p running this. We did get a little uh, like virus notification. It appears we have uh, this little, what is this? Yeah, this is, I, I guess, the beta of like the action center. And we can just open this up. And, or or, or uh, the Windows Solution Center is, is I, I guess what it was called at this time and yeah just apparently it's opening up um, a Internet Explorer window and it's bringing us to the uh, Windows Vista web page oh, no, I think that's because I clicked um, on that antivirus button so it's just bringing that up so we'll just close out of that but yeah this is uh, the Windows Solution Center and I believe this was uh, turned. I believe this was turned into the Action Center in, in the final version of Windows 7, but it was just called the Windows Solution Center at this point. 
and yeah this is basically the uh, feature that tells you if you need to get like any virus protection or any spyware protection or change all your automatic update settings that that's all done from here and I think that the control panel looks pretty much the same except for this little thing on the side here uh, like this whole design kind of looks a little different we can go into all control panel items you know pretty much the same options so I'm just gonna go into system here and so yeah you see it says uh, Windows 7 Ultimate it does actually uh, have a 30-day activation um, with Windows uh, uh, like like the Windows activation thing so but I guess you could find um, a product key for this build I don't know if like any of those were issued though that's the thing uh, but yeah so here is yeah, oh, apparently I actually gave it two processors instead of two cores, so I guess that's, I guess that that's, you know, still uh, okay, because it, it, you know, thinks it has two physical processors, but, you know, I think that this would run a lot better with, you know, two gigs of RAM and having dual core processors, but, or in this case, two separate processors, because I guess I should change the number of cores next time. Um... But I'm going to go into the personalization. I'm just going to do that from here. And I'm going to see if we can turn on arrow. You see we have some different sounds also. Well, I guess arrow doesn't work yet. I think I think you have to go in and like uh, enable something or it's just because it thinks I don't have like a good enough graphics adapter to run arrow. So it's just not doing anything. Um which I don't know how you like actually configure that in uh, the, the uh, you know virtual machine to you know make it work with that but yeah I think there's a few more things I think if we go I'm, I'm just gonna do a winver command so I can show you what this looks like um, this does now say Windows 7 so this is you know probably one of the later builds and it does actually uh, expire on July 1st 2009 and I believe this was introduced in September of 2008. So you have like almost a whole year basically uh, until this build expires. I'm not sure about uh, that 30 day activation thing. If that's just there because you put didn't put in like a product key or if that just doesn't work in this version of Windows at this time. But yeah, and then just like all uh, pre-betas, we have a send feedback thing, which just is going to you know give Microsoft all of your feedback like whatever you type in here and apparently you do have to enter your product key to make that work so I guess that they did issue product keys but you just don't need one to get into the build which I'm sure that's all most you probably want is just to you know kind of see how the build was and you know you can do that just fine without the use of like any product key so um, yeah I think that's about it I don't think there's a lot more to talk about you know this kind of looks like a hybrid between the final version of uh, Windows Vista and the build 7000 because they kind of have some things they left uh, from Windows Vista you can see that they're kind of starting uh, that whole transformation into the Windows 7 theme kind of with these buttons here I, I just think those kind of look more like uh, the Windows 7 buttons but but yeah I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video if you guys enjoyed and would like to see more videos like this definitely be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and just like always, be sure to give me, you know, any feedback and, you know, any video ideas that you guys have down below in the comments. I always, you know, am looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say um, about the videos. And, yeah, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.